In the last video, we got ourselves booting with Grub. And in this video, we're gonna see how we can print things onto the screen by writing directly into video memory. Now, this is something that we're gonna to try to do because we want to try to avoid the BIOS interrupts that we were using previously. So we're gonna see how we can adapt our methods to be able to print using just the VGA memory that's available to us. So this process is not too complicated, but there's a little bit that we need to introduce. We're gonna create a VGA.h and a VGA.c file. This is gonna be where all of our video memory related uh, code is going to go. So inside of the header file, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a few different things. So I like to set up the pragma once for this. And I'm going to include in this uh, standard int.h, which is something that we had from our previous setup of our operating system. It just had all of our different type declarations. And I'm actually just gonna copy it over. So this was the code that had like the 8, 16, 32, and 64 signed and unsigned integer uh, the definitions, right? Just giving us the shorter versions of these definitions, as well as the Boolean definitions here. So that's all we're getting from this, uh, from this file. Now in VGA.h, what we're really looking to do is to find a few different constants related to video memory. Those constants are going to involve a few different things. First off, we want to define the color that we're going to use for both the background and text. So a lot of different colors that are available, the two that I'm going to use are going to be kind of like standard colors, which could be black. And I'll use a, a light gray, which has the number seven associated with it. Each color has a different number associated with it. And what I'll do is I'll show you with these two colors and I'll show you how you can add additional colors into this as well. Now we're gonna define the width and the height. The width for VGA is gonna be 80 and the height is going to be 25. These are the standard widths and heights. And basically what's gonna happen is the memory associated with video is going to be basically like a grid. And the grid is gonna have a width and a height associated with it. So there's 80 uh, memory slots on the width and then 25 on the height. So basically it's 25 rows and it's 80 different columns inside of it. What we could do is for each of these entries, we're gonna be able to write something to print to the screen, as well as the colors that we wanna use for that particular print. So the colors of the text, the colors of the background. So that's why we define a width and height is because we're trying to get that grid-based layout for our code to be able to use. Now there are a few different uh, functions that I'm gonna define inside of here. The first is going to be print, which just prints out a string. The next is going to be scroll up, which is gonna scroll the screen upwards in the case that we reach the bottom of it. We're gonna have a new line function, which will print a new line. And we're gonna have a reset, which is going to reset the screen for us to be able to print on. With that all set up, we'll go over to VGA.C and we'll start to implement the actual code for this. So of course I'm going to include my uh, VGA.H, right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be keeping track of the current column that I'm at, which will start at zero. And I'm gonna keep track of the current line that I'm at, which will also start at zero. I need to have a reference to the location of my video memory, which we could do as follows. We set up a constant pointer towards the memory location, which is at B8000. This is where video memory is located. So that's the location of the video memory. We're then also going to get the color that we wanna use. So I'm gonna set up a default color. The default color is basically going to have two different pieces to it. So it's going to have the background color and the text color, and they're just going to be shifted till fit inside of the one variable. So I'm going to set up a color black. I'm going to shift this by eight, and I'm going to or that with, and let me just uh, word wrap this so that it all fits. I'm going to or this with the color I want to use for my text, which would be my light gray, which I'm going to shift by 12. So the reason why I have the shifts there is because when I or these two together, I wanna to make sure that they end up in the right locations for them to be interpreted co correctly. This will place the color black on the upper half, and then this places the, or sorry, this would place it on the lower half comparative to this, which is shifted more, right? So that just ensures that everything is going to be in the right location for us. And then we're also just gonna set up a current color variable, just in case we ever wanna change the color. And we'll set that to default color to start. So when we start printing, the very first thing that we actually need to do is initialize the screen, which we typically do with a reset function. The reset is gonna set the line back to zero. It's gonna set the column back to zero. It's gonna set the current color to the default color, so it just kind of initializes everything. 
And then what it's gonna do is it's going to go through all of the rows and all of the columns and reset them to their default colors with no characters. So the way that we do this is just using this kind of standard um, you know, nested loop structure where we loop through all of the Y and then all of the X and we clear it all. Basically what you can think of with this is basically we're going through row by row on the screen and just clearing each of the uh, locations one by one. And you'll see that in the code that we use here. So it's the VGA of Y times width plus X is equal to a blank character and the default color. So what's happening here is basically every entry in VGA memory has two different things in it. It has the character that should display, which we're setting to blank, and it has the color that should be used for this, that being the background color and text color. So do you see that we or these two together? So the result is gonna be in that memory location, we'll have the character and then the color to print for that character. And that's the way that it interprets this result. Now, the way that it's iterating through is the width is telling you how long each line is. Y would be the current line that we're at. So when we take Y times the width, it takes us to the proper line. So think about if we were on line one, if this were like zero indexed, right, where the first line is line zero. At line one, it would be one times the width. So it would take us to 80 in this case, since the width is 80. That takes us to the very end of that line. And then we add on X to take us to the correct slot or column inside of that line. So do you see how that moves us to the right location in order to write in there? That's generally the way that we're actually working with our VGA memory here. So that gives us our reset function. The next function that I'm gonna implement is my new line function, which will print a new line onto the screen. And this is important for like handling things like the slash n character, right? So in order to print a new line, what we say is we say, sorry, it keeps turning on the cap locks. Uh, if, if the line less than the height minus one, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna increment our current line. We're gonna set the column equal to zero. We set the column equal to zero because we're moving to the next line. So we're starting at the very beginning of that line. That's why the column goes to zero. Now, if this isn't the case, it means that we're really at the bottom of the screen. And what we would have to do in that case is we would want to scroll up the screen and we'll implement that function here in a second. It would set the column equal to zero as well. So with scroll up, what we're generally going to do is we're going to scroll the screen. So the way that that generally works is we say scroll up, and then we do that similar sort of structure of nested loop where we have u at 16, y equal to zero, uh, y is less than the height, and then we do a y plus plus, and then we are going to have a similar setup for x, which would be starting off equal to zero, x is less than the width, x plus plus. And what we're basically doing is we're shifting everything up. So we're gonna take, what is that, y minus one, so what's at the previous line in terms of the y value, and we're gonna set it equal to the current line. So do you see how this is really just shifting everything up one? So it's just kind of like moving everything up on the screen, hence scrolling up. And then the last sort of thing that we're going to do here is we're just gonna have one more loop where X is equal to zero, X is less than the width, X plus plus. And what we're really doing here is we're just clearing everything else that is new. So we're just clearing off the remaining pixels that we've added onto the screen. So all this is really doing is it shifts everything up and then clears everything below in order to do the effect of scrolling up on the screen. Now, the last thing that we're gonna have here is going to be our print. Now, our print is gonna utilize these functions in order to print content onto the screen. And generally, the actual setup of print is pretty straightforward. We're just gonna go through character by character of a string and we're going to either print the character or in some cases, we're gonna do something special based on um, a special kind of character. For example, in the case that we get slash n, we would print a new line. The reason why we have to do that is because VGA memory doesn't even really understand this concept of slash n. When you look at C in the background, what it's really doing is it's interpreting that slash N and printing a new line for you. So we actually have to do that manually ourselves. 
There's a few other special characters, and really there's probably more than the ones that I'll show here, but we're just showing like the most used ones, really. Uh, the carriage return is going to set the column equal to zero generally, and it will break from there. We also have a tab character. A tab character is an interesting one. A few different things that we're going to do here. If the column is equal to the width, then what we need to do is we need to do a new line. So basically, if you try to tab to the point where you're at the end of that line, we move to the next line. And then in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to start by defining the actual length of the tab which is generally four spaces, but the way that we define it is four minus column mod four. So the reason why we're doing this is because when you're thinking about the way that the memory is working, consider how we have like the character as well as the color inside of there. We're setting this up so that it's parsing it to give us actually four spaces worth of size for us to be able to work with. So that's generally what this is doing. And then what we do is we just simply say, okay, we're going to go while the tab length does not equal zero, we're going to take the VGA at line times width plus column plus plus. So what I'm doing here is I'm, again, maneuvering to the right location with this line times width. Remember that this is going to take us to the proper line. And then we increment the column by one and add it on in order to get to the proper column. So it gets us to the next available column. And what I'm doing here is I'm just giving it a space with the current color on it. That's essentially just going to give us this idea of a tab. So that's how that's generally implemented. And then the final case is the default case, which is just that we want to print the content to the screen. Again, if the column is equal to the width, it means that we have to go to the next line. So we'll do a new line here. And then finally, all we're going to do is we're just going to take the VGA line times width plus column plus plus. Same sort of idea as the last one. We get to the proper line with this code here. And then we add on the column incremented in order to get to the next available slot on that line. And we're going to put there the character S and then the current color. And then we'll break. Final thing here, we just need to remember to increment S so that we don't get into an infinite loop. And that is how we print using the video memory. So all the data will be written into this memory location here, or starting at this memory location here, rather. So at this point, we should be good to try to build this and see what happens. So let's give that a shot and see if we have any sort of problems inside of our build. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and compile through my C code. And really, we should put this into a make file at some point. We'll get around to that in a little bit as well. Uh, but if you want to, you could put this into a make file yourself. It's good practice. So we're just going to compile again with no stack protector, no built-ins. And we'll do that for kernel. Kernel compiles fine because we haven't changed anything in it. Uh, VGA should hopefully compile fine if we've done everything properly. Oh, we just have some missing semicolons. That's a, it's a typical thing that I'll generally do. I've been programming too much in JavaScript and I forget to put in my semicolons. So these two semicolons are missing. And just while I'm at it here, I might as well add some code into my kernel to actually print something. I realize that I haven't done this. So I've included VGA.h here already. And what we'll do is we'll just do, um, we'll do a reset on the screen. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to print. So I'm going to say, uh, we'll say print hello world slash r slash n. So carriage return n. There you go. So let's give that a shot. So again, we'll compile our kernel. We'll compile the VGA. Okay, great. Everything is working now, it seems. So last sort of things that we're going to do here is we're going to use NASM to get our boot together. The boot hasn't actually changed, so doesn't really need to be rebuilt, but that's okay. We'll do it anyways. And then we're just going to link again in elf uh, i386 mode, and we'll do that linker.ld file. I'm going to output this as kernel, and I'm going to put in boot.o, uh, kernel.o, and vga.o. There we go. Everything is working fine. I'm going to move that kernel file into my, uh, my grub directory, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my grub make rescue uh, kernel.iso with this location here. 
looks like everything worked as expected. Last step that we need to do is just try to run it. Now I have to go through and find my, my QMU command. Um, ah, there it is. So we're going to do QMU system I386 with the kernel. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to enter into my operating system. I'd see that we got hello world. Now I actually had my colors flipped here. It's a gray background with black text. That's okay, it still looks fine, right? Uh, but if you wanted to flip that, you could. So this shows that the output is working. Let's just quickly play around with the colors a little bit. So what you could do here is you could say, okay, we could just swap these two, right? So you could say color black, and then we could have this as uh, color light gray. And that would give us, you know, the, the actual intended effect that I was looking for. So to get this back together, all I actually have to build is my VGA again. And then I just have to link everything together, move it to the right location, uh, make my rescue, and then we'll just boot up again. And we should see things now with a black background. There you go. Now that we got the standard sort of background. So just finishing off here, last things that I'll show you, I just wanna show you all of the different color options that you could have, or just like a good sample of them. I'm gonna copy them over because there's a whole bunch in watching me type it will be boring. So here are all the different colors that we would generally have. You see that they just go in sequential integer format. I encourage you to try playing around with these colors. Just try putting in some different ones, you know, see what you like, see what you don't like. Uh, pick a color that seems to be, you know, interesting and enjoyable for you. Whatever you like best, it's your operating system. So you could do as you please with it. But with that, you now understand the basics of writing with VGA memory. Now there's a lot of other things that we need to consider with VGA memory and a lot of other things that we need to consider overall with our operating system setup. And we'll continue to explore those ideas in the next upcoming videos. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.